everybody out there in the comic book community world and welcome to another comic book rundown. The rundown goes through the week of March 14, 2012. Uh, and we've got a huge week. Uh, every other company is in the double digits. There's only two companies that are in the single digits. Boom Studios with three, Dynamite with four. Every other company is either just in the double digits or oh, really far over the double digits. Dark Horse having ten, IDW with twelve, Image with 12, so Image and IDW are tied, and Marvel and DC, of course, with the most. Marvel with 18, and DC with a whopping 20 issues. DC beating out all other companies this week once again. Um, wow. So, um, without further ado, do we're not going to make a really long intro. Once again, though, it is a pretty big week for some companies, pretty small week for others, but there are very few people I know that buy from Boom Studios anyway, so really... For the most part, it's a pretty big week in double digits. If you buy from Dynamite, uh, those are the only people that are going to be a little disappointed with only four comic books. However, let's get into the comic books this week. And Mike, you're kicking us off with Dark Horse. Okay, thank you, Chris. Okay. And of course, with me, you guys know Mike. Yes, hey guys. And Cody's not here with us this week. As I said in my Avengers log, sorry for interrupting you. Sorry. Um... Basically, I'm working full-time at least until the end of June. I don't know full-time, but got to be on call 24-7. So, yeah, my time on CCC is very limited as well as on Skype and everything else. So, that's why it's most of the time going to be me and Mike now. Going to try to grab Cody every week or every two weeks. But for right now, this is the way it's got to be um, because of my personal life. So, I take full responsibility for this. But, yeah, life is what it is. Uh, so, let's go, Mike. Okay, Dark Horse, we're going to start off with Buffy the Vampire Slayer, number seven. Season nine, free oh, fall. Oh, season nine, free fall. Yeah, these are, this comic is very rare. Yeah. This is one of those exceptions. Written by Andrew Chambliss and art by Georges Genty. If you've been watching Buffy, um, you know what's going on. I find it creepy that Buffy and Spike, uh, the whole scene is just creepy. I'm sorry, but it just it's, is. It doesn't appeal my interest, really. Never I mean, appealed never... my interest e to my interest either. Yeah. So, continuing along. Yeah, moving on from that. Next, we have Conan the Barbarian, number Ooh, two. Ooh, girl in the background. Uh -huh. Written by Brian Wood and art by Becky Colnan. Colonan? Or Colonan. Uh, I've never been a huge Conan the Barbarian fan. I know number one is still at Midtown, a uh, free uh, double-signed book or something like that. Interesting, yeah. but it looks like a, it, it is an interesting cover though. Like the the blood yeah, the, the story here is that. really interesting. The artwork is uh, something to be desired, but the, the it's really really good. So maybe something to check out if you're interested in jumping into something. But I'd go back and get issue one. All right, next up, Dark Matter number three, which was written by Joseph Molozzi and art by Malozzi Malozzi and art by Gary Brown. Wow. I like the cover. I like the fire. I like the swords. I like everything like that. It looks very interesting. I like how the face is on top. That emphasizes the whole, like, story and stuff like that. Sure, why not? Okay, some tells me that was the wrong example. But anyway, next, House of Night number five. Written by PC Cast and art by Joelli. Joelli. Yeah, Joelli. Yeah, I was right. Joelli yeah, so, Jones. Because there's those little asterisks over the Z. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, beautiful cover. Very oh, beautiful absolutely. Cover. I mean, it looks like really it's nice. It's a tale of heated passion and deadly heartbreak starring warriors, Hippodiles, and Herc... Forget it. Anyway, there you go. Nice stuff. Involving yeah. the gods. Looks like Hercules. Yeah, it kind of does. Oh, really. it's just spelled differently. Yes, it is Hercules. Yeah, Hercules. Whatever. Yeah, uh, but it looks good. Oh, it looks absolutely beautiful. Okay, next... Lobster Johnson, The Burning Hand, number three. Written by Mike Mignola and art by Tansi Zanjik. Or I know Jack. Cody's been enjoying this series, or the first issue he enjoyed anyway. That looks like Ghost Rider in the background, by the way. Well, it kind of does. The Johnny Blaze one, you mean. Well, any Blaze one, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, that is sick, though, that background. I have to admit that. And, mm, uh, I like the classic looks classic kind of like and uh, from the description paranormal horrors I mean hey anyone who's a paranormal fan pick this up mm -hmm. alright moving on orchard number five written by Ch Tom 
Morello, and art by Scott Heapburn. I have no idea what to say about I this. don't know what this story is about either. I just feel bad for the prisoner. Yeah, and getting burned, so to say. It doesn't look like he's going to get burned. He looks like he's going to get cut and burned at the same time. Well, that, that that's something nobody will want to be... Uh... You ever get cut by something with fire on it? Oh, well, yeah, I have been burned. Well, I have been burned a couple of times. I'm sorry, it, it, I, I had to throw the fire on you that time. <laughs> you just pissed me. Next off. up, Robert E. Howard, Savage Sword, number four. Written by various. Yeah, oh, written in uh, art by various, so it's written by anybody. <laughs> it's written by everybody. I wrote half the book. Yeah, sure you did. No, I didn't. Anyway, actually, it says at the bottom of the cover right there, featuring. Rule. Oh, no, never mind. It's featuring oh. several different stories. Those are the people in the comics. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. Oh, wow, in stereo. Stop copying me, you I'm reading jerk. your mind. I, I'll kill you. It looks like an interesting book, something that's a compilation that I would absolutely say if you're interested in checking out certain things, check it out. Oh, yeah. Well, we have two Star Wars books this week. Yes, the first Star Wars book is Star Wars Agent of the Empire Iron Eclipse, number four, written by John... As Strander and art by Julian Hagenard Burt. Really nice. That guy still reminds me of Han Solo a bit. And yeah, robots. The color, the cover is very colorful. I have to admit that. Pretty cover. Absolutely pretty. I mean, Millennium Falcon and all that stuff. Yeah. There's no Millennium Falcon and stuff. That's not the Millennium Falcon. Well, That's Sky City. Yeah, but I'm reading the description. Oh, shit. Now he's on, on board, board the, the Millennium Falcon. Falcon. Thank you. <laughs> it's a trap. Oh, shoot. Well, that's something I to have to go. For. Yeah, I've got to get this in trade when it comes out now. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Millennium Falcon fan right here. No, I'm a fan of the... I'm a fan of several things from Star Wars. The Millennium Falcon is one of them, but wow. i got to get this book now. Definitely. comes out in trade. It's mine. Mm -hmm. Okie All right. And remind me, Mike. I am I'll, I'll remind you. Don't worry. And the last Star Wars book, Star Wars... Knights of the Old Republic War, number three, which was written by John Jackson Miller and art by Gigi Boldassini. Yeah. Try saying that ten times fast. Boldassini, Boldassini. Blah, blah, blah. I've been ah. reading this story. It's really, really good. The cover looks really sweet also. Um, the lightsaber just says it all. I'm sorry. I like all the Star Wars books that I've been reading, and I'm planning once the other ones go out and new ones come in, Gonna be, unless they sound horrible, I'll be checking them out. Well, let's hope not. Like, they're good in that way. Yes. Okay. Uh, next, and Strain. Final, and final Yes, one. and finally from Dark Horse, Strain number four, written by Daniel Lapham and art by Mike Huddleston. Not a dead bodies. Um, I have no comment for this one. All I know is that I guess it takes place in New York City. Yeah, because that's what it says in the description. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's all from Dark Horse. So, uh, You're now... You're going straight to Boom. Yes, we're going right... In, well, I am, actually, going right into Boom Studios. Starting off with... The Kitty Book. Adventure Time. Number two. I had to say, like, commercial. Written by Ryan North and art by Sheely Pauline. I hate freaking unicorns. I never watched this show because... I don't care to watch this show. <laughs> I don't know, like, it, it's just the whole... Like, I, I can't... Yeah, I understand that. But, I mean, hey, for those who like Adventure Time, you know, that's fine, but I'm just not one of them, so, yeah. Moving along next, Elric the Balance, Loss, number nine. R that is a... Oh, sorry. Yeah, finish it. I was gonna be a... Written by Chris Robertson and art by Francisco Biagini. I am not gonna say. I know, I know what I'm it means. I'm not gonna say what the end of that last name sounded like. Well, you were you replaced the B A F. Yeah, just shh, shh. It looks like. Listen. A, he reminds this. me. This. He, hey, hey. Oh uh, no, hey, the cover. Hey, it's illegal to say that on this channel. Thank you. That is illegal. That's illegal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the cover looks really nice, though. The cover is really, really nice, and it's a new story arc. So if you're interested in checking this out, now is the time. It says right here, brand new arc. Uh, great jumping on point for new readers. Wow, I just said that. He reminds me of Cloud from Final Fantasy. A little bit, but uh, well, except the sword. I saw now. the I saw the previews to it. It didn't look too good. It didn't appeal to me. So yeah. Next, we have Exile on the Planet of the Apes, number one. Ah, number one issue. 
Yeah, first uh, issue. Written by Karina Sarah Bucko and art by Mark Lamming. So this is a new Planet of the Apes cover. It's a number one for those uh, interesting. Um, not who's been fun. following? The I story. know, I know. Scott's a huge uh, Planet of the Apes fan. He likes apes, so I think he'll be interested in this series. Scott, number one, out this week. So if you're near a comic store, you might want to check it out. Yep. Just saying, uh, any Planet of the Apes fan might want to check it out. I'm not a huge fan, so I'm not checking it out. But still, well, I told you Lucas is number one, but I'm just. Yeah. And that's it for Boom. Yep. So now uh, I'm going to pass it on to my brother Chris, who will be doing IDW Publishing. Just call it IDW, boy. IDW, that. First issue from IDW is 30 Days of Night, number five. Uh, zombies. Written, Written by. I shh. You forgot. Shh, boy. Boy. Don't call me boy. Boy. I'm a man. Listen, listen boy. I'm a man. Listen, boy, man. I am Don't, a man. Do not, do not interrupt me. Don't interrupt Written by, shh. Written by <laughs> Steve Nellies and art by David Fernio. Oh, Ferno, Ferno. No. I don't know. Whatever, oh. Um, looks very zombie, bloody, gory. It looks like yes. a Joker zombie to me. A little bit. Anyway. Moving along, we have two Doctor Who books. First, we have Doctor Who Classics Series 4, number 2, written by Simon Furman and art by John Ridgway. I'm guessing this is more along the lines. IDW's newly recolored reprint of the classic Doctor Who tales from years past returns. Okay, so it's reprints, basically, in this issue. So if you're interested in reprints here. And then the next one is the ongoing Doctor Who Volume 4. So this is the fourth volume now. So it's Doctor Who number 15, four volumes in, written by Joshua Hale, Phil Koff, and art by Matthew Don Smith and Mark Buckingham. This is the photo cover because Midtown did not show any other covers this week. So, yes, it's a photo cover of the girl. They're using them. lots of photo covers for everything lately. I don't, lately. Care. I, I, I don't this know a, why. This special arc. Special art by Eisner nominated. Oh, Eisner nominated Joshua Hale, Fal Falconer. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a photo it's cover. I don't who. know what else to say. Okay, moving along, we have two G.I. Joe books. First one is G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 176. My God, you know how long it takes to get to 176? A long time. I'm talking we were kids when this started. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> Snake Eyes. I don't know who the woman's name is. I keep forgetting. Not going to say anything. And I forgot... I don't know who that one is. In the nah, I, 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 I may not say anything about Riot Artists. And oh, written by Larry Hama and art by S.L. Gallant and Herb Trimpy. Oh, Herb Trimp! He did the, 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 the Hulk. He did the Hulk way back in the 180s and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, how about that? Or was it Ron Trimp? I think it was Herb Trimp. Uh, we might have to do research after. We might have to, yeah, mm. we're going to have to do um, research. Yeah, but anyway, you're welcome. Yes. And yes, he did, by the way. I'm looking at him now. He did. Oh, wow. And he also did Defenders and a few other comics from way back when. So I was right. And Fantastic Four. The annual, yeah. So, just saying. Well, great to have him on board. Artist. Next is G.I. Joe Volume 5, of course. Just want to make sure I say that because uh, this is a... Anyway, G.I. Joe number 11. Cobra Command Part 7. Civil War, written by Chuck Dixon, art by Alex Cal, Will Rosdo, Rosendo, and Dave Wilkins. Hmm. That's a nice cover. Why does that guy in the background look a little bit like an older version of John Cena? Or Norman Osborn. Shut up. <gasps> I, well, John Cena is the worst example you Whoa, can use. On, I'm going to give you John wow, Cena. Wow, really? Godzilla Legends, number five. That's a nice cover of Godzilla, written by Bobby... Kurnow, 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 whatever. Yeah, Kurnow. And art by Dean Haspiel, Arthur Adams, and Bob Egledon. Eglet, Egleton, Egledon, 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 ah. Egledon, Egledon. I don't care. It's Yikes Godzilla eggs. versus a big old spider, and it says the final legend is here. So this is the last issue, apparently. 
Oh, really? Wow. Does Godzilla have a weakness? The government wants to know. And in order to get the necessary data, tissue samples must be taken from the great beast. I should be getting this <gasps> it's series. It's drama. But it's good. I should be getting this comic series. Why am I not getting this comic series? Well, you could still get the paperback. Don't miss the special final issue of The Legends. Yeah, might have to. I'm going to probably have to when it comes out in trade. IDW has really good stuff. Anyway, next up is Infestation 2, G.I. Joe number 1. Oh. Written by Mike. Ratch, Reich, whatever, and art by Valentine de Landro and Livo, Liv, Livo Romandelli. Wow. Try saying those names ten times fast. <sighs> no, thank you. Hmm. So we have the next installment to Infestation 2, mm -hmm. and it's the G.I. Joe one yet again. It's the return of G.I. Joe and it's number Infestation. One. And number two is coming out next in, in two weeks. So, really cool. I don't know. What, what is your Snake take on this? Like, life. like an Infestation 2, do you actually think that this comic might... I think this month's you know. uh, set of comics is going to do a lot better than last month's. I know that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one already got five stars. Oh, that one absolutely off the bat. So, no doubt. And speaking of that, next issue that's a week late, at least for, um, for Midtown, because I saw there were reviews on this, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Infestation number 2, number 1. Yay! Um, apparently this is a, uh, written by Trish... Tristan Jones and art by Mark Torres, Metan, Met Metan 3 and Levito Romandelli. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently, uh, at least in Midtown, it's a week late. I saw reviews on this last week, so I don't know if it came out last week. Came out, it was coming out this week. The release date here says uh, the 14th, so I'm going by what Midtown says. All of our rundown stuff comes from Midtown, so as far as Midtown says, this came out this is coming out this week i like i cannot the wait it got huge just... huge stars huge stars so very very good so this week this month for infestation 2 yeah. i think it's going means teenage mutant ninja turtles i mean why wouldn't you not give it five stars it's awesome oh, yeah, yeah and another five star one next up is lock and key clockworks number five written by joe hill of course the legendary joe hill and art by gabriel rodriguez my god this series is awesome i swear guys if you have not been picking up lock and key I really wouldn't pick up the individual issues and wait for the hardcover books just to have a full collection of the hardcover books, but I just cannot help myself. I have to keep reading the series. I can't wait like a half a year for the next book, so I'm just it's like, collecting it's the like series. It's like they collect a key, and then we got to find out what does this key belong to, and then you find out. Michael, it's like a if big, I ever get my like any of the keys, mystery. I want to go into your brain and see what, how you how it works. Oh, oh, oh you, you don't want to go in there. You do not half want to Half the time, I don't there. want to go in there. You're right. So stay away is your best option. Go home is your best option. I am you home. You are not home. You yes, I am. Anyway, Go next up next is one. Next Men Aftermath, number 41, written by John Bar Burns and art by John Burns. Um, very nice. It's a very nice issue. does look a little bit creepy, but nice at the same time. So yes, notice the shadow hands in the background. that it just So, yeah, I would say creepy nice. Creepy nice. Time continues to shred itself in this issue, apparently. The, oh, no, not another time issue. Oh, what do you yeah, think next yeah. one's all about? Next up, Star Trek 100-Page Spectacular 2012. Wow. Whoa. Written by Scott Timp Tipton and art by Elena Casagrande. Casagrande. Mmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, looks yeah. really good. 100-page special, guys. It's a seven ninety nine book, though, so I would say it's only for the hardcore Star Trek fans. Yep. Looks good. So, pick it up. If Beautiful you're, cover. Yeah. And finally, from IDW, Transformers More Than Meets the Eyes, number three, written by James Roberts and art by Alex Mine. Now, that's your favorite book from the other one as well. Or was it the other one? No, it's More Than Meets the Eyes. You're right. Oh, yeah, I was right. Oh. Uh, I follow Rodimus more than I care about Bumblebee. I really just don't like Bumblebee. Bumblebee is like... I don't know like, why. I don't know why. I feel bad. I don't I know why I focused on him. him. I mean, Optimus Prime, hello. He's somewhere out in space. I know. Pretending to be dead. So, that's it for IDW. Let's not waste any time here and go into um, Dynamite um, Entertainment. Okay, first up is Dark Shadows number four. Written by Stuart Manning and art by Aaron Campbell. Um, just me or does that guy look like kind of remi no? That is Dracula. Wow. Oh no, it says Barnabas. 
Barnabas Cullen is back, so maybe it's not Dracula. It just reminds me of Dracula. Yep, he's though. back. I don't even know who he is, so I don't care that he's back. Well, we'll see in the comic. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Next up is Garth Enos's Ninjet... Ninjetis? N Ninjetis? I think Ninjetis. Ninjets. Ninjetis well, number two, with a beautiful cover, sold out all around on Amazon oh, wow. this week. Um, well, I could tell. I mean, it's... Yeah. Written by Al Ewing and art by E-Man... Casalo, Casalos, Casalos. Um, she's not Asian. Well, <laughs> I like how the shirt shows like. Mm -hmm. I always like the art movie. inside the art. Yeah, because because it, it gives that that feeling of like mm -hmm. what's gonna happen. I what? like that. No, it's never mind. I'm it just sorry. builds. Never up. mind. Never wow, mind. Wow, isn't anything I say a, a, like interests you or you know what? Just, just go on the next comic. To answer your question, no. Next, Nowhere Man, number two, written by Mark Guggenheim. Guggenheim? I don't know. And art by Jivon J. Kang. Is it just me, or does this look like kind of like that, uh, like something from Star Trek? Well, that thing... 500 like that, years yeah. in the future, when civilization thoughts are monitored by a centralized supercomputer and a crime who knew computers were going to be in this and crime has all but been eliminated yeah okay i well, like to commit a crime what are they going to do arrest me for that well in the real world not in that world obviously what the way the way the the, the thing says it has been eliminated mostly i right, will mostly um, interesting book. I'd say check it out. It's only it's the second issue. And, oh wait, we have one more. Finally, sorry, finally from uh, Dynamite Entertainment, Warlords, Warlord of Mars, number 16, with several different covers, probably because of the movie that's coming out, uh, written by Arvid Nelson and art by Edgar Sal Salazar. Uh-huh. Wow. Somebody's in trouble. Where's John Carter when you need him? And that, oh, John Carter is finally you know united with his son. That background looks like uh, from Mortal Kombat. What, Ooh, he, what was the name? He never knew. I don't know. But mm. wow. I think she has it all under control by the way she's like smiling, saying like she's going to win. Uh, go ahead, criticize me, because I know not, that look. I'm, I know that not, look. You know the look. I'm go kidding. ahead. Just Next yeah. is Mike with Image Comics, and then we get into the big two. So take it away, Mike. You have a okay. good amount of comics. All right, thank you, Chris. All right, let's start off with Image, with activity. Where do you get your information from? In information? information? Information. Yes. My friend, information. Starting with activity to learn number four. Rim by Nathan Edmondson and art by Mitch Grades. Grades. What goes up must come down. This comic book from the description. Uh, looks good. Uh, it looks like the bottom half is water. Yeah, kind of missing. But all in all, water. But all in all, looks good. See, you never make me finish. That's your problem. You never let me finish. Because you don't know what you're talking about. Half the We're going to give you the next comic book before you and you're criticizing. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying. Anyway. Blue Estate number 10. Stop staring, Mike. Written by Victor Calvanches and Andrew Osborne. And art by also Victor Calvanches. Calvanches. Cal Cal and various so a lot of people, yeah. Eh. It's eh. 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 I, I mean, I don't know. I never read the comics, so I'm not really. Oh sure ha ha! Stuff. White Russian. If you read the cover. Oh yeah. Ha ha ha! Next. Yeah. Next up, Glory number twenty-four, written by Joe Keat. Tinge and art by Ross Campbell. Oh, another Campbell. Now, what um, am I looking at? Because this, and half. yeah, th this covers like either this dude is crazy, chick, or this chick is crazy, or 
I, I have I have no uh, other comments of what to say. For I this always cover. like the split face covers, but some of them are just creepy, and this one definitely is creepy. Yeah, I don't. We're not gonna mm -hmm. go into that. All right, next haunt number twenty-two, written by Joe Cassie and art by Nathan Fox. Of course, because Greg Capello and Todd McFarlane left, so now haunt is left to other artists yep. and writers. Oh yeah. Uh, what do I have to say about this cover? Somebody has a, and there's a girl, and, uh, um, <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's very happy. Well, yeah, I mean. And he has a little katana sword, apparently. <laughs> and a drink in one hand. But Moving yeah, along. We're gonna, okay, yeah, I guess we'll move along now. Uh, let's see, Marksman number six, which was written by David Baxter, and art by Javier Aranda. It's the last part to the miniseries. Oh, really? It is? Oh, wow. Uh, for those I read who... the first issue. It was all right. Yeah, so for those who have been collecting it, there's your last issue of the miniseries. Will it be an ongoing? Well, no. It's over. Yeah, but but, the, but can't short nope. series... Well, then I feel bad for the other comic books I've been reading with the short series. So for those of you who are interested, want to see the conclusion of this book, here it is. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Next, Nancy in Hell on Earth, number two. Written by El Torres and art by Enrique Lorenzana. Hello. Uh, There's a chainsaw over Nancy in Hell. Yeah, and uh, a girl against all the herds of darkness. Hordes. Of darkness and heaven. Hordes. Yeah, hordes. Horn here's a who. Next! I always get you. Alright, next. Peter Panzerfus, number... Faust! It's German. So it seems. Number two. Very good. Written by... Oh, I deserve that. Written by Curtis J. Wiebe. And art by Tyler Jenkins. Not Leroy Jenkins. Um... I had to say that. I well, I just... The cover looks very... i not saying it's bad. It looks kind of mixed up. Mixed like sketchy. Up. Sketchy? Who are you? I'm Mike. Who are you? This is Peter Pan redone in German. With guns? Yes. So, yeah. It's a twisted tale. Kind of like the... the, the um, Dorothy uh, in The Wizard of Oz. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I, I I don't know what else to say about that, so I had to recollect my thoughts on that. All right, next, Reed Gunther <laughs> number nine. Uh, okay, before I talk about the cover, this was written by Shane Huckton and art by Chris Huckton. Must be related. No, really. But wow. Oh my God. Hey, my... look, a bear, who is about to eat the man or train choo-choo coming down the track oh the the evilness in this cover but it looks like something that would be interesting for those who have read it mm. and a number one came out this week saga number one written by brian k Vagan, who also wrote why the last man and art by farana staples so let's see uh, they return... Oh, oops, sorry. They return... Star Wars style action collides with Game of Thorns. Uh, no. Game of Thorns? Where do you see Game of Thorns? Game... Oh, Game of Thrones. Thrones! Oh, my God! Game... I... I'm, I'm reading it far away, and then I'm looking now, I'm like, oh, wait, it's Thrones. What? The... What? You... It's... Well, got you up. It's... Next. Strange Talent of Luther Strode, number six, written by Justin Jordan and art by Trad Moore. Last part. Wow, lots of, lots of conclusions this week from Image. Mm, new ones will come along. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They always do. So, uh, for those who want to see another ending to a miniseries, there's another one to pick up for this week. And, yeah. Moving on, next up, 
Thief of Thieves, number two. A lot of people love this series, apparently. It's getting really high reviews. Yeah. Well, it's written by Robert Kirkman. That could be why. And art by Sean Martin Bur Burrow. Burrow. I thought it was all one. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Thief of Thieves uh, looks really... Thievish. Thievish? And, uh... Yeah. Lots of irony. irony. From what the description says. I'm just reading the description. And last but not least from Image and also uh, Top Cow. Artifacts number 15. Written by Ron Mars and art by Stijipin CGI. I, I don't even Stephen know. Cjig. Stefan Cjig. I don't know. Um, Search for the Angelus. Artifacts is uh, pretty good. I haven't read it, but I've heard it's pretty good. So, um, who and where is the Angelus? I don't know. Hmm. That's some, uh, well, that's the first question that must be answered. So, if you want to know the answer, guys, this is your comic book, and you will find it out in this comic book Ow. for this week. Yes. And that concludes Image. So, now I'll pass on to my brother, Chris, who will be doing Marvel. Thank you, God. A number one this week from Marvel is Avengers Assemble number one. And for those of you who are who shop at co uh, uh, major comic shops like I do, Midtown Comics, there's a bunch of variants. There's two variants with your comic shop: a blank variant. Uh, there's a DF signed by Stan Lee coming out. A DF Ooh. signed by um, well, Stan Ken, ha a Ken Hazer remarked edition. And then there's a the regular Mark Bagley. Um, cover. I got the one of the Midtown ones. Anyway, it's written by Brian Michael Bendis, of course, because mm -hmm. we all know Brian Michael Bendis can't let go of any Avengers Spider- well, he did let go of Spider-Man, I gotta be honest. We all know that Brian Michael Bendis can't let go of anything that's ultimate without being somehow involved or anything Avengers right now for some messed up reason, which is kind of bad because that means nobody else has been writing Avengers for how many years now? About a good five, six years. A lot of writers out of work, Brian. Maybe it's time to cut back on some of those issues. He's doing like 37 books a month. How is it? I don't know how he does it. I mean, he must eat, sleep, and go to the bathroom writing. <laughs> and art by Arthur Adams and Mark Silvestri. Um, I got this to um, check out the new... Uh, what's coming... Uh, you know, what's to come with this series... But, uh, for the most part, yeah. Well, the cover looks nice. I wouldn't say it looks... Oh, I didn't say it looked no. bad. I'm just no, saying, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't say from what you said, but, uh... Avengers Assemble, um... You know, maybe... Hold it! It says the issues will be polybagged. The last time they did a polybagging and there was a DF signed, that means there's a possibility that some of those comics might be signed by somebody. So it'll be like, uh, like the golden ticket from Willy Wonka. Like you got yeah, but then again, I people. highly doubt that because who's going to sign like a Midtown Comics exclusive? Yeah. And you got to be really, you know, really you gotta, lucky. Yeah, lucky. Well, I'm going to check out the first issue, guys. Check out Dark Avengers. Is this comic... And let us yeah, just question. Is the comic uh, leading into the movie or it's different? No, I think it's, I believe it's completely different. Oh, okay. Avengers, number 24, the shocking conclusion. Oh, no. When they say shocking, that means bad. Uh... To the epic Hammer slash Norman Osborn storyline. Maybe, I hope sh in shocking they mean shocking because everybody turns on Norman Osborn. And once again, the writer. Oh my god, which Avenger will take their relationship to the next level? Will Norman Osborn's dream come true? The Summer of Avengers starts here. Oh, brother. But here the, the, we the, go. The, the, written, of course, well, we all know who it's written by. Brian Michael Bendis. Bendis. But the art. And the art is geez. by Daniel Acuna. That's the only difference. If I say Avengers, you say Brian Michael Bendis for now because apparently Brian Michael Bendis is a glutton for writing for Marvel. Next up is Battle Scars, number five, written by Christopher Yost and various other writers. And art is by Scott Eaton and Carlo Pegonoia on Pegonoia, whatever. Oh. So, Headshot. big reveal in this one, apparently. There's a big good thingy. It's shocking in this issue. I don't know. I don't read. And it's rated T plus, so yeah. Yes. Next is Captain America number nine, um, written by Ed Burbaker and art by Alan Davis and Alan Davis again. I don't know why it's his name twice, but anyway, um, 
uh, I'm not liking the second storyline very much. I'm sure a few of you guys are out there. Uh, I'm waiting for the next story arc to see if I'm going to keep or drop this. But um, Machine Smith is in this one, and he's on the loose. It's a shock that Cat America's stories are getting a little, you know. Just that one. The other one. <gasps> ah, the next one. Next yes. up is Carnage USA number four. Venom enters Carnage USA, written by Zeb Will Wells and art by Clayton Crane, an awesome artist. And I'm looking forward to seeing Venom enter the whole fray of things. But I'm just going to say just this. I hope Flash Thompson knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. I am going to read this comic, and I'm going to find out myself. And this will be added to uh, Mike's Monthly Review, which is mine. That on Dark Avengers C86 once again. Exactly. Check it out if you're not on there. You know, the whole three things that you get. Well, not three. There's only really two things you can do. Comment and, you know, the subscribe thing. Anyway... Next up is Dawkin Dark Wolverine number 22 series finale. Mm. I hate seeing the series go. Written by Rob Williams and art by Matteo Bugfanetti and Giuseppe Camarasoli. Um, mm. I hate to see the series leave. No. I hate to see it leave and I hope that Dawkin really doesn't die. Well, if he dies, that that would kind of... Uh, I mean, he does have the same thing like Wolverine does, a healing factor. Or, or he doesn't. I don't know. I just I hope he doesn't he does. die. I'll live with anything but death. I, I don't want to see Dawkins die. He's a really good character, and there's a lot of character development that could come of him. But uh, I guess we'll see, at the, um, we'll see on Wednesday if he really does kick the bucket permanent. Next up is Fantastic Four 604, uh, written by Jonathan Hickman and art by Steve Epning. And Mike Chow, I completely forgot this came out this week. Did not buy it. Probably getting it next week. Just because it's the extra size issue, the epic conclusion of our three of the three year epic story with um, uh, Jonathan Hickman. Um, I, when they kicked Spider Man out, I, I was, was like, just going to say that, Sally. I mean, how could you <clears throat> leave out Spider Man? They could be a uh, Fantastic sorry. Five, like can't good, there? I like mean, it's FF night, still. It's good night, Sally. Anyway, next up, another book that's on the fence with me, at least. Incredible Hulk, number six. Uh, written by Jason Aaron and art by Mark Silvestri and Leavin... Lee Neil Yu? I don't know. Uh, what dark price did Hulk pay to separate himself from Banner? That's the only reason why I'm buying this. I want to see what he what he had to pay and what happens next. If it doesn't appeal to me, I'm not getting the second story arc. But if yes. I had to take a guess, I don't know if it would be like some type of mu mutation or something. Uh. But it's something anyone will want to find out who's been keeping up with this. So mm. yeah. Next up, Journey into Mystery number six hundred and thirty-five, written by Kieran Gillen and art by Mitch. Britt Weiser and Stephanie Hans. Um, yeah, Damien shows up in this book. Oh, Damien does? Oh, wow. Yeah, what about that? Damien Hellstrom. Well, that's... Wow. But wow, 635? That's a lot. Um, yeah, it's been around for a long time. Uh, the cover looks really interesting. Never really was interested in Journey into Mystery. Next up for the kids are the people who watch the cartoon Marvel Adventure Superheroes Volume... Well, it's volume two. Number 24, written by Keith Giffen, J.M. DeMantis, and art by Willington Alves. Oh, it's the final issue. Wow. I'm sorry. Final issue with Giant Man. Um, now I feel bad. This is the final issue. I didn't even know that. A lot of final issues this week, I guess. Mm. Oh, and, uh, and Spider-Man's in it. Can Spider-Man help her find him? Well, Ant Man who there you disappears. Go. Hmm. Next up is North North Hanger Abbey number five. Written by Nancy Hedgeski and art by Janet Lee and Jillian Tortino Tedes Tedesco. I have no idea about this, Michael. Uh, well it's no. a good cover. Beautiful cover. Next up is Mike's favorite, Punisher, uh, number nine. Yes, yes, yes. Written by Greg Rucka and art by Matthew Clark, Matthew Southworth, and Brian Hitch. Okay. Two 
Punishers for the price of one, possibly. Okay, from what I saw in the last issue, I hope to get some explanation this issue from what happened with the whole shooting and everything and what's going on between him and Rachel and all that stuff. But, yeah, there can only be one Punisher, and that's Frank Castle you see right there. It the gets cover. loud in this issue, that's all I can say. All right, next up from Marvel Comics is Scarlet Spider, number three. This series has been off the hook amazing. I've been loving every second of Kane and uh, every and everything else. New story arc starting here. However, you only got to wait two more. You only have two issues to go back for uh, the full series. I would absolutely highly recommend you check out Scarlet Spider. It's really good. The cover looks amazing. You're right, Mike. It's written by Christopher Yaus and art by Ryan Stegman. I know you didn't make an, uh, a notice. I, I, did. I was gonna... Anyway, yeah. next is Ultimate Universe. Ultimate Comics X-Men number 9 written by Nick Spencer and art by Paco Medina. Um, what are we looking at? That's Colossus. Oh, so he's not the Juggernaut anymore? Not in the Ultimate Universe. Thank God. Didn't happen there yet. Let's hope it never does. Let's hope not to. Next up, Wolverine and the X-Men, number seven, written by Jason Aaron and art by Nick Bradshaw. Awesome series. Wolverine side beats out. Um, oh, this is Wolverine side. Yes, beats oh, out. Thanks. Beats out. Yeah. Cyclops side every time. And All the time, not every time. Uh, I'm sorry. It's a good series. I'd highly recommend it, but you'd have to go six issues back. Um... Up to you guys, though. And final... No, not finally. And next up is not the final issue. The, I believe, second to last issue of X-23. X-23, number 21, with an epic cover. Oh, my God. I'm wow. so glad I kept this series up to this point. When we started, when I started, written by Marohi M. Liu and art by Sana Takada, Takeda. Beside the point, though, I, in the beginning, wanted to drop the series. Kept it for the reason. Then ended up starting to read it myself again. And you know what? 21 issues later, two years later almost. No. A year maybe? No, there's 52 weeks in a year. There's 12 months. The Two years. No, two years. Oh. Nearly two years of this series. And I'm glad that I've held off on dropping it. I'm very happy with every single issue. Looking forward to the series finale. Or, yeah, the finale to this series next month. Dark and Dark Wolverine ended a month early. Um... Basically because X-23 wasn't out last month, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's why. But uh, now I understand why. But yeah, X-23 is really good, guys. I would highly recommend picking it up, the whole series in trade. Next up, another one of Mike's books, X-Men Legacy, number 263, with Wolverine. Uh, yes. Written by Mike Carey and art by Co. Pam. Please, people, get easier names. <laughs> to... to so Wolverine and the X Men are joined in battle by Cyclops' young X Men. Yeah, I remember that oh. in the ending issue. I was like, "Why, why Cyclops is young X Men recruits?" I don't know. Did that be from Cyclops? Why? Because there should be no reason. That's it. And finally, from. Marvel also, um, but it's not Marvel, it's really Marvel and Icon, <clears throat> comes Powers, number nine, written by Brian Michael Bendis, ah. another story that's written by this man, and art by Michael Avon Oming. And trust me, from DC we're going to probably be hearing other writers or artists. I have nothing to get, see that's the thing, Brian Michael Bendis is a good writer. The only beef I have is every other comic writer I'm saying is Brian Michael Bendis. Okay. It's the, you might as well just erase just... the Marvel name and call it Brian Michael Bendis. Don't get my ideas. I BMB. Like That's what the new Marvel's going to change the name to. BMB. Brian Michael Bendis, 24-7. He's a good writer. They're just stretching him out into too many things. He'd be even better if he was in only about three or four books a month. Okay, but just no, no ideas. Okay, anyway. No. That's it for Marvel. I'm passing it along to Michael to take care of DC Comics. Take it away, uh, Michael. Thank you, Chris. Once again, stuck with DC. Good luck. Starting with Batgirl, number seven. Written by Gail Simon. Simone. Simone. And art by Adrian Safe. Vicente. Vicente. Uh, what are these names? And, and Adam, Adam Hughes. Hughes. For God's sake, people get easier names. New story arc, I believe, yet again. 
Yeah, this is uh, pretty cool. Uh, it, uh, the Joker shattered Barbara, Barbara Gordon's life in the landmark story Batman the Killing Joke. In this issue, see a side of that story that has never been, that was never told before. Oh, okay, oh, that, looks, that sounds old. interesting. I never saw the Killing Joke, so this will be interesting to All see right. completely. All right, another Batman book. Batman and Robin, number seven. Now, I know Cody does not like this, but I... And this is my second favorite Batman book. Oh, different opinions. Mm -hmm. Written by Peter J. Tornazzi. Tomazzi. Tomazzi. O-M. And art by Patrick Leeson and Mick Gray. Really good. Uh, I've been enjoying the Batman Robin thing. Even though Robin kind of did a predictable thing, we all knew it was going to happen anyway. Yeah. And the final Batman comic... Batwoman number seven, written by J. H. Williams and Hayden Blackman. Hayden. Hayden Blackman and art also by J. H. Williams. Uh, continuing the second, uh, the second story arc, really nice. It's a really good. Uh, you know, I dropped it, and then two months later, I ended up buying it again because it was really. It turned out to be really good. It's the Drown World, to Drown the World Part Two, the story, and it's really good. I'm in, I'm enjoying Batwoman. All right. Next up, Cartoon Network Action Pack number sixty-seven. This is outside of the more the DCU. Yep. Written by Charles Sag Skag and mm -hmm. Jake Black, and art by Adam Archer, Luciano, Vi Vicen Vicino, Vicino, and Michael Cavall Cav Cav Cavallaro. Wow, nice name. Um. Uh, Interesting cover per se. Uh, alien in the background, monkey with another guy who transforms his hand into things. Ah, uh, it's Cartoon Network. Go figure. Well, Let's go back to the regular DCU, shall we? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna go back now. Deathstroke number seven, which was written by Kyle Higgins and art by Joe Bennett, Art Thibert, and Simon Bisley. Well, There's nothing really to say with this. Always felt anime to me this series. All I could say is that there's a battle going on mm. for this cover, but cover, but it looks uh, interesting. Next up, Demon Knights number seven, written by Paul Cornell. Mm -hmm. I got it right. And art by Diogenes Neves, O'Claire Albert, Tony S. Daniel, and Norm Rabman. Wow, lots of artists. Mm. Ah, uh, Demon Knights. Wow, I feel bad for him. He's getting taken Yeah, this out. is it. From what's the description. It. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they'll well, be back next month. That's what week. they want you to think. He'll be back next month with another issue. Yeah, they make comics so predictable nowadays, wouldn't you say? No comment. Next issue, please. Yes, next is Frankenstein, Agent of Shade, <laughs> number seven. Funny. Written by Jeff Lamar. Lemire. Lemire, Lemire, Lemire. I, I, Too I, late, I beat you. Go ahead. I heard Lemire. Art. Art by Alberto Pontaselli and J.G. Jones. Instead, J.G. Wentworth. I have uh, nothing to say with this book. If you have nothing to say, let's just move on. To be honest, nothing. <laughs> let's it's just go on to the It's the conclusion of the first one. story arc. That's it. This I can talk a little bit about. Yes, which is Green Lantern, number seven. Written by Jeff Jones. Jeff Johns. Jeff Johns? Oh, Johns. Oh, sorry. And art by Doug Mackney. Mackey. Chris, Christian. Christian. Christian Alamy. And John Mackney. Where, where did he come up with these names? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Starting the Indigo Tribe line, uh, the Indigo Tribe story, looks really, really interesting. There's a bat in the background of this picture. Wait, what did Indigo represent again? Compassion? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. I just guessed it's that It's a really one. good story. I'd highly recommend the Green Lantern series from DC. Oh, absolutely. Moving forward, though. Yes, moving on with Grifter, number seven, written by Nathan Edmondson, and art by Scott Clark and Jason Gorder. Interesting. I dropped Grifter after issue three or four. Yeah, it really wasn't going anywhere from what you said. Exactly. All right, another one is Legion Loss, number seven. I dropped that after issue two. Written by Fabian Nassisa and art by Pete Woods. Once again, really nothing to say. The series I don't know is where sort of bombing. I don't understand how this series didn't get canned either. 
Mm. All right, next. This series deserves to be canned. Mr. Terrific number seven, which was written by Eric Wallace and art is by Wayne Fatcher. Foucher. Foucher. Um. Gialukia Giguladuda. And J.G. Jones. And J. G. Oh, my Jones. God. Yes. Looks very interesting. I don't care. Next issue is its last issue. Oh, it is? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought they weren't being canceled. The Mr. Terrific's being canceled, yes. Oh, it is? Oh. Probably skip that. Anyway, next one is My Grace Adventure, number six. Written by Aaron Lopresti. Also have oh well, he's also an art. Yeah, artist is also by Aaron Lopresti. And along with him, Scott Collins. It's a sick cover. I, I have mean, no idea what's going on. I laser eyes. Robot, you know? I know there's a robot man and a garbage man, but eh. Yeah, but one last thing I want to say about this cover. After seeing this woman, nobody better talk about Starfire ever again from the Red Hood and the Outlaws. Uh, Next, please. Ah, yes. My comic and... The final sadly, part. Sadly, the final part. Ray number four. Written by Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti. Uh, and art by Rich Parada and Jamo Eagley. Jamal. Jamal Eagley. Nice cover. I knew the Ray was going to come back. I mean, I knew that he didn't actually kill him. But I wanted to see after his girlfriend put a gun to uh, that villain's head. Yeah. Oh, it's the evil Mestro. Oh, they, they didn't give him a name in the last one. Now they give it to him in this one. Maestro. Maestro. But yeah, I, it's really sad to see that go, but... Now there'll be more miniseries in between. Yeah, another series that shouldn't be going, but we're not going to get into that either. Next up. Resurrection Man number seven, written by Dan Abnett and art by Fernando Dagnino, Avin Riss, Ivan Riss, and Joe pra Prado. I never correct you when you make a mistake. Anyway, I'm gonna kill you. You go ahead with your. I don't read it. I dropped it after issue five. Then let's go on to the next one because I have no clue whatsoever. Same, and I comment. have no idea about this either. Shade number six, written by James. Robinson, and art by Kelly Hamner. Yeah, Kelly mm. Hamner and Tony Harris. Once again, I have nothing really to say about this because I don't read it. it. It's very mysterious. I love how they say, don't miss out on a series that MTV Geek calls, calls a perfect comic book. MTV Geek, I'm sorry, the day I listen to anything that MTV tells me to buy is the day I die. Next, please. Ah, here's something. Suicide Squad number seven, written by Adam Glass, and the art is by Federico Dallo Cuccio mm. and Ryan Benjamin. Harley's origin is revealed here, and it ain't pretty. I'm looking forward. Of to course, this. Harley Quinn's isn't going to be pretty. Why would it be? She's Harley Quinn. I still like the old costume from Harley better. Also, of course. Why? Of course. Mm. Uh-huh. I know you hate this one, Chris, but I have to say it. Good. Superboy number seven. Written by Scott Lobdell. Lob Del. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And art by R.B. Sylvia, Rob Lean, and Shane Davis. Who in their right mind would make Superboy like this? I mean, I know I haven't read Superboy. I mean, I've seen his old costume and his personality... But seeing this, compared to the leather jacket and the cool shades and everything, that is not him. It's versus Rose Wilson. I have nothing to say because I've already said my piece in my Avenger log. Next up are the rest from Vertigo. So go yes, ahead. Yes, DC Vertigo is going to be Norlanders number 49, written by Brian Wood, and art by Paul Azacita and Massimo, Massimo, Massimo Carnavali. Seriously, people. Seriously, get better names. Lots of pointy the objects. The Icelandic trilogy continues with part eight of nine. Pointy, but mm. good. So yeah, and want to pick it up? There you go. And almost uh, halfway to one hundred mm -hmm. as well. Another issue. A number one comic, Saucer Country number one, written by Paul Carnell and Cornell. Art Cornell. Ah, and art by. 
Ryan Kelly. I'm actually going to pick this up for next week. Uh, it looks interesting enough uh, to look into. Okay, I'm just going to just say what this cover looks like, and it's saying it in my head. Girl power with aliens. She's the president! Yeah, girl power. Oh, my God. Well, well can women get power? I mean... I, how do you feel with the... And everything, and, and that's what you feel when you look at this? Well... Don't you know there's aliens behind her? Well, that 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 can mean worse. Just get to the next and the last one. concluding this week, DC Vertigo. What a beautiful cover. Unwritten number thirty-five. And Exercise this... final. Oh, the epic size finale. And this was written by Mike Carey. Oh, it's over. And art by Peter Goris, M. K. Perker, and Yoko Shimazo. Shimazu. And it's the final issue. And, uh... Name is... Oh, wow. In her hair, there's words. There is? Oh, yeah. Uh, name is Lizzie. It's... Anyway. Hmm. Uh, beautiful cover. Absolutely. It's too bad it's going. But farewell to the unwritten. And with that, we're done. Yeah. So, guys, as I said, this was a pretty big week for the big two and several independents. Uh, if you're a Boomer Dynamite fan, uh, not so much of a big week for you guys. But other than that, it was a pretty huge week. Um, hopefully next week will be a little bit lighter now since this was a huge week. Probably will be, knowing the way comic uh, the comic companies are. They give us one heavy week and then one light week. Well, isn't it always the middle of the week or sometimes at the Middle end of the week. month, they usually cool down a bit. Yeah, that that's what I kind of... Comment below anything you'd like to mention about any of the series we mentioned. Um, if you are enjoying the series, please let us know because... Um, we want to know if you guys are enjoying the rundown or not, if you think we should let it go, or if we should continue. Yep. It's always nice to hear people say whether we should continue this series, or if your opinion is to drop it. It's always nice to hear that, too. So we yep. know we're doing this. Well, I know that about 65 people are enjoying watching these every week, so thank it's you guys just for the watching. just cancellations and all that. I know. It's and, and last issues and all that. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, guys, opinions in the comments below. Uh, let us know what you um, what you think of these comics. If you're looking for comic reviews, a lot of us do it. If you're interested in mine and Mike's, Dark Avengers C86, check out the channel. And my monthly review. And if you're interested in Yu-Gi-Oh, go check out Cody's channel, Toxity. Little yep. plugs here and there. It's a tiny plug. It's not like we're advertising for anything yeah. like that. Little tiny plugs aren't going to hurt much. Uh, get out there, guys. Read those books. Enjoy. Have a great week. We'll see you guys back here next week. Please feel free to comment. Uh, leave comments. We love comments. We will answer comments, or we will enjoy reading the comments, at least, uh, if you don't leave us something to respond back to. so And they will count. Please comment. Yes. Let us know that you're enjoying the series. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week for another rundown. Right. Take care, everybody, and keep reading. Later, guys.